Hosey Gloves here, and today I'm going to show you the importance of lining up your vocal and also some workflow tips and things in FL on how to really speed this up. Uh, now, well, first, let me show you first, let me show you an example. So I'm going to come over here to this part because the timing was actually kind of bad here. So she's singing a harmony to her original take, and I already comped the original take. This is what it sounds like with the original timing. Floating down, abstract shapes. Okay, so that's the original. Here it is with the timing fixed. Floating down, abstract shapes, once around and takes the space. Dreams from dust to golden bus, brings you from the head to here. So, a pretty cool deal. Um, you could notice it's, it's substantially better. All the words line up. Now, there are these spaces I still need to address. We're going to actually talk about um, two ways you can sort of deal with these spaces. But let me show really quick show you the workflow behind uh, this sort of a deal. So let's go ahead and do this one. Now, she didn't sing this off time. This was uh, one that was just particularly off time. Her first part was actually pretty okay. And you see the chopping was a little less severe here. But let's just go ahead and let's pretend I, I didn't do this. And let's go ahead and line this up a bit. So first... Um, I look at this, and I'm going to chop off what I don't need. Now, I'm going to use a number of keyboard shortcuts. Um, the, what is this, right? The right shift key, if you have an open lane of information, uh, I also will generally make things a bit bigger. So if I have an open lane of information, I'm able to use the right shift key to pull up the cut tool, which is very helpful. You'll also see me, if like I wanted to pull it up here, I don't want to cut this MIDI up. I can middle mouse click, left click, and if I do it very quickly, like that, middle mouse, left click, middle mouse, left click, I pull up the uh, the menu that's up here in the corner. And so I can go right to the cut tool and just drag wherever I want my cut. And if you hold down the alt key, um, either alt key, it will allow you to uh, cut wherever you want. So you can like, oh, I'm gonna cut right here. If you don't, it's gonna uh, limit you to the lines depending on your snap setting. I always leave my snap setting on and use alt to deviate from it. Uh, I think most people do. And then also, if you're outside of your cut tool, so I just switched back to the pencil tool. If you're outside of it, if you hit Alt on the left side of your key keyboard, you can move stuff around without regard for the grid, which is important right now. If uh, if you're not outside it, if you hit the uh, other Alt key, the right Alt key, it'll mute your vocal, it'll mute whatever you're on. So um, it plays a different role if Shift is not held down. So you got to remember that. So there's a bunch of like keyboard shortcuts. Also, one other thing before we get going, under project, they have this time base in the PPQ, stands for pulse per quarter note. So you, a DAW will determine its resolution uh, based on this uh, PPQ. And in FL, you can, you can jack it up all the way to 960. I have mine down right now. Normally I have it all the way up when I'm doing this sort of a thing, that way you can zoom in really far. You can zoom in a lot further, but it takes up a lot more CPU. My computer is already struggling as it is with the recording software So and all this. So I'm just not gonna do that, but you might do that. Um, and if I, now FL actually doesn't zoom in as far as I like a lot of the time, like this is as far as I can go right now, but a lot of the time I want to go all the way down to the sample level. And so I have to go into like studio one or something. I'm hoping this gets overhauled in FL 13. Um, but we'll see, you know, who knows? So, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and just chop this up and I'm going to bring up just warnings and things about file sizes and things, just stuff that you, the, trust me, you're going to want to know about. Okay, so here we are. We're going to start editing and we've moved our stuff around. What we're going to do now is I'm going to move this over. I'm going to hold down alt on the left side, move it over just a tad so it's lined up a little bit better. I'm looking for these spots to see how this is where the words pretty much are. And so these are lined up. These don't need to be perfect. It is a harmony part. It's not like a, a double or anything like that. This, uh, this fade right here, you might be wondering what that is. That is actually from the de-clicking option. Did I make this thing detached? I did. I didn't want to do that. Um, that is from the de-clicking options. If you double click on it and you come over here, we see we have a whole bunch. I actually will use most of them uh, depending on what it is I'm doing. Crossfading is great if you really want things to mesh together. Uh, I really like these options. Um, they're better than fade than manually doing fades all the time. But you could manually do fades if you want. I uh, don't. So 
I'm using the generic right now, but you'll find yourself using smooth and fade, uh, crossfade. It just keeps things from clicking. Whenever you have an audio file, you move over, you want to be careful that it doesn't click. And so this one has bleeding, so it actually lets a little bit of the file, it does like a, a longer fade. So uh, yeah, just so you know, that's what these things are. Various, the longer ones are the more extreme, just ones you literally just select them. If I go to crossfade, you see it's like a lot more extreme, but I want a generic. So it only really affects the, the very front of the file. And so, okay, that's what we have right now. And let me make this just a, a smidgen bigger. And all right, sweet. So if I play this, down. and I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. Some of you guys are real sticklers and you may want to move this to match this. And so if you want to do that, there are ways to do it. Uh, first, I'll go to my cut tool, right? I'm going to make a cut. And then I'm going to make this file unique and I'm going to do it by just hitting M. This is a really important step because um, I'm going to do time stretching. I'm going to stretch this just a smidge smaller here um, to do this. And this will affect your pitch actually. But if you do like very small amounts, it doesn't matter too much. And okay, so I've moved it. But if I did not do stretch, it would have time stretched the entire thing and I'd be in a world of hurt. You can alternatively do this in new tone. Uh, I prefer to do it in the playlist editor for now. And on our mode, we have resample. We want it on stretch. And that will help us out here. So we're going to just move this over just a tidbit. Down. And there you have your deal. So, okay, we moved it over. And now what I want to do is I want to move. I'm just taking my time here. I'm moving. I'm making a cut because I don't want to move any of this stuff over. The singer didn't sing everything out of sync. This is uh, pretty bad, though. I'm going to have to actually move this the other way. But I can move this now this way. And now down. I'm like, cool, that's that's pretty darn in sync. I might even go a little bit Floating over. Down. Cool. And then I'll go, okay, I'll move this one over. Um, let me make a cut here in the silence. I'll move this one over. We're moving along now. And then I look at this. I can't zoom in any further, but I have a feeling I want this over just a smidge. But these values are so small, this is okay. Now this being over here, not okay. And um, so I'm gonna make an adjustment here. What I'm gonna do is this is a breath. So, so you can tell just by the waveform. I'm not sure how much you've looked at waveforms, but this is, you, you can mess with uh, breaths quite a bit actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this. I could hit shift M to activate stretch or turn it off. And uh, I'll just double check what its mode is. I'll put it on stretch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and move it over the amount I desire. Oh, I didn't make it unique. There you go. That is the problem. And sometimes you'll make small things you won't realize it. So I'm make unique a sample, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to move it over. And then I'm going to grab this, move this over, and now, bam, done. So there you have it. Now you can be as now you basically go through do that for the whole vocal. You can be as particular about this process as you want. As you saw, I, I can be. Um, you can get in there really just make things exactly line up. Things like vocal line are like a miracle because they just do it all for you instantly. Problem is it just cost a fair chunk of change. And sometimes this is just a satisfying thing to really do. But if you're working with like eight vocal lines at the same time, that's a problem. It's actually on my list of things I, I really need to get because I've been doing this for people for a while and I am tired of it. But anyways, there's um there's some tips and tricks. When I'm in the zone and just working, I go through, I do this so fast. I'm just like, bam, 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 bam. bam. Like a lot of it's, uh, you can get visual feedback. You just need an uh, audio confirmation when you play it. And you're just like, dang, that's it. Now, uh, you don't want to skip out on this. I've seen, I've received mixes from studios where they skip out on this process or they won't even pick the best takes and um, comp the vocal, meaning take all the best pieces and make a best vocal. Sometimes the vocalist will be object to it. But uh, so if they object to it, you kind of just got to, get them to do a really good take then. But most vocalists these days are cool with you comping their vocals. It depends on how, um, if they're into the whole studio sound or if they want the natural sound, which natural generally just means out of time and other things if the vocalist isn't good. If they're good, the natural means there's like a whole nother meaning to it. Um, that's like a whole nother, that's like a philosophical debate there. So, but I've received mixes where they'll take all the vocal takes and they'll comp them into one take Meaning they won't comp them. They'll just put them all into one take like a big chorus. 
and they'll just send that out as their mix um, just because they're just chugging work through. And, it, man, it kind of pisses me off. But I guess if you're not getting paid very much, I could see why you'd want to, I mean, like, pay me 10 bucks i'm gonna not do a very great job it's not worth my time to sit here for hours and make your thing sound really good so uh yeah so that's the that's the process at the end of the day uh, i wound up with this let's talk about these silences now down, i can um i should uh I, I plan to do a little bit more vocal alignment here but this is already pretty nice but this spot right here I removed the breaths just because they were they were distracting. So now what I want to do is I want this space to be filled up so that it doesn't sound empty. There are two ways to do this. Number one, um, room tone. So in your recording, all of these recordings are done in the same room. So I can go through, find an area like right here maybe where there is a fair amount of room tone. Just stuff like this. That's actually quite a bit of noise. Um, and you just find something where there's an area or a region of silence, and you just plop it in there, and that's it. You can time stretch it and everything. You just need something that's not silent there. Fills up the track, um, and it it sounds, because it was recorded in the same room, it will, it will fit perfectly. Because it will have the same noise profile and everything, and since noise is 100% random, and uh, you are recording, I mean... That's another debate we could get to mathematically. But if you were to put that there, no one would like bat an eye. So I don't think that's a great idea though. for this. What I want to do is I want to take this vocal and I'm writing all my vocals into channel five. Bus. And I want to automate the reverb on right there. And I have a reverb send somewhere. I'm doing all sorts of fancy processing right now, which is... um which might confuse some of you, so I'm not going to bring it up too much. But I have this uh, vox to verb send here. And so what that is, is this verb is being sent to a, I mean, this vocal is being sent to this verb send out here. I can't remember which one. I think it's just this one. And I custom made this for the vocal. And so I'm sending it at moments that I think are musically impactful. Here, I might be able to, whoops, uh, to, uh, to mess with this and make it so that the verb, the reverb, is like dust like you hear like the verb instead of her voice right there so instead of using noise i'm using like an audio effect which i think is cooler anyways now this automation is behind my stuff i can click it to bring it forward but then it goes back what do i do and the answer is you click on the automation this will bring all the automation forward so if you have automation on top of vocal stuff this is how you do it okay cool so now i'm going to add a point i'm going to bring it over and do something like this let's see I need to bring it back down for this part rather quickly. So let's uh, hear what that sounds like. By the way, other DAWs, their method for doing automation, like just clicking like that, is, in my opinion, an utter nightmare. Like it's just a disaster. So I've gotten used to some of it, but I just think this is like just the clicking and stuff. Now, they come in automation lanes, which I think are, are better in many cases. I wish there was a way to assign automation lanes. Like you could if you wanted to come over here and do lock and stuff, but it'd be cool to just say assign to automation lane under track eight or something as like a menu option. That would be pretty rad, but they don't have that yet. So I do favor the automation lanes. I'm talking about like the graphs and stuff. I this the just the way these work are just super nice some dogs include it like this but others like don't and it's like what the heck what the heck so um anyways let's let's give it a listen see that's pretty rad now we've got this through there it doesn't sound so uh, suddenly cut off and i only did it to oh no both of these are going into five so it happens to both of them so let's give a listen let's try um let's try doing it a couple times right let's let's put one here I'm going to hold down alt to leave the grid and I want my verb. Now the verb, this is going to send it to the verb. So it's a delay effect. So actually I probably want this over. I want this a little bit higher and this over and this to come down like so. Floating down, abstract. Yeah, let's bring this. Floating down, abstract. Floating down, abstract. Floating down, abstract. Down, abstract shapes. Let's put it again here. Um, now my verb has a, a large filter on the lower side, so that's why the down isn't coming through as much. Um, but this S should come through just fine. Down, shapes, now I don't want it to ramp up like that. Let's ramp it up, maybe not as much. Down, shapes, oh, that wasn't enough. Dreams from back shapes, once around and takes the space, dreams from the... 
right there. That could be a cool one. So let's uh, let's put something there. I don't want that much of the bus in there. Golden bus brings <laughs> She's saying bust, by the way, not bus. But uh, when you listen this closely, you notice stuff like that. So uh, yeah, so I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. I control S, save that jazz. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to do a mix down of this because it already sounds pretty cool because you kind of mix it as you record and do stuff. But I have to do the takes. You got to figure out the processing and the songwriting. The whole thing's just like quite the process as soon as you say, let's add some legit vocals. So uh, yeah, that is um, just a whole bunch of stuff on how to align vocals, some of the things you should consider, all that jazz. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Support me on Patreon. I put up free downloads if not every week, every other week or so. Just like things like door creakings that I recorded during some of the sessions that I thought were just cool sounds, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, have a blessed day.